Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here, and welcome to episode 45 of The Knife Guy. If you are new to my channel or you just came out of some weird corner of the internet and you have no idea where you are, I'm a knife guy, knife enthusiast, knife collector, knife user, knife enjoyer of many sorts, as a lot of you are. Lots of guys and gals watching this series. We are all knife people uh, of many different unique paths, but oftentimes those paths intersect and we experience a lot of the same things. And that's what this um, that's what this Sunday series is all about. I like to lay out a whole bunch of knives that are either mine or lent to me by some generous viewers. And I like to pick them up and just sort of handle them and talk about them and give you guys something to look at and enjoy um, while I talk. Um, so this uh, this particular episode, um, what we're going to be talking about is it's kind of I kind of have to ease into the topic. And, you know, like a lot of episodes, this has been overlapped. Uh, at least once, but I kind of want to zero in on it. Um, I'm stuck at home, and 99.9% .9 of what I do is here at home. And I've found that, you know, while the types of tasks that I do with a knife are, you know, I suppose they could be categorized in somewhat the same way as when I was, you know, working in office, but I, it almost seems like I'm using a knife more now than I was. Um, you know, when I was in and out of my office and all over the place, right? Um, there are a lot of packages being delivered, mail, um, you know, with me being at home and opening everything, my wife working, um, you know, the, the going outside and making sure the dogs have food and uh, breaking down boxes, throwing them away, right? Trying to keep the house clean. I use my knives a lot for very generic EDC style tasks. You know, even a couple of times with my son, because my my kids are now at home with me, so I, and now I have, I mean, my, my four-year-old, I have his lesson plan from school, which isn't anything complicated, but I've also turned into kind of a teacher here at home. <laughs> not really, but, you know, uh, if you could imagine a lesson plan for a four-year-old, it's not that complicated. We do a lot of art projects, and a lot of this stuff requires cutting cardboard or cutting shapes and things, and a lot of the cutting tasks, I'll just use scissors because they're right there. You know, if it if it requires that type of control that only scissors can offer. But many times I find myself using a knife because it's more convenient in the moment, right? Also, cooking, I'm I'm preparing breakfast, lunch, and, and uh, dinner sometimes even for my kids. So I use knives for things like opening, you know, the packages with the... And you got to pull them up. I, now, I just kick it in and, and cut it open, especially if I'm going to use a whole package. I hate those. Just jam the knife in there and cut it open. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about, right? So I'm using these knives for a multitude of different things. And I've found, you know, I have a lot of people who send stuff to me who say, yeah, you know, go ahead and use it. For example, uh, a couple of amazing Tucson knives that were sent to me by Neves Knives. Um, they said, yeah, use them, you know, whatever. So I carry some knives like this around the house. And then other knives, you know, I'm a little bit more cautious about. I don't want to be, uh, you know, carrying this thing around. This shear will go off all day. Um, and bumping it into stuff and, and leaving marks on it. So this is more of a sit on the couch and flip it and then carefully put it back in this pouch. But in any case, what I found is that my preference, my EDC preference, um, which is generally a full-size knife between the sizes of, uh, or the weight of 4.5 to 6.5 ounces. And for anybody who doesn't know what, what my reasoning is there, I like solidity. I enjoy the feeling of a solid knife and the the feeling of being prepared that that knife is durable enough and well put together enough that I can tackle whatever tasks, you know, generally what life would throw at me given my daily circumstances. But it has, you know, I'm, I'm fully aware that durability and, you know, structural integrity have nothing to do with overall weight, right? It's just that it gives me a good feeling and I have gotten used to purchasing uh, premium knives and I've gotten, you know, pretty honed sense on what I consider to be premium. Now, Around the house, I found that, you know, I'm wearing, um, you know, like athletic shorts and sweatpants and stuff like that. And uh, a lot of the knives that I was, you know, previously carrying just are just a little bit too heavy. Even knives like my um, Ritter Hogue, for example. Um, a knife like this, at something about four and a half ounces, is truthfully just a little bit too heavy. So I've, I've actually been carrying some lighter weight knives, and then here very recently, I've just kind of been grabbing whatever is lying around, right? So 
on a normal day, I might carry um, something like uh, the RAD or the TS-223 or the Hinder XM-18 or maybe something like the Spyderco Python. Um, you know, like this would be uh, absolutely a knife. Bit. Oh yeah, you know, I totally could justify a knife like that. Um, it's, it's almost annoying to carry um, knives like this around the house. Now everybody's gonna be different, right? Um, and before I get started here on the topic, I want everybody to know that, you know, we're gonna talk about justifications um, and zeroing in on certain aspects of a knife and whether or not it's completely appropriate depending on the setting a little bit, but I also want people to know that I fully understand just wanting a knife because it, it, it looks a certain way and uses a, a certain material and that it's not always about maxing out utility. No matter how many times I say this, there's there's always there's always one person, and I know the person that's commenting watched watched the video for ten seconds and thought that you know their one comment would like you know uh, contradict the entire episode. There's always one person yelling out, "Ain't no reason to have a knife if you ain't gonna use it," you know. And yeah, I can talk like that because I'm from Midwestern Kansas, and literally every single person around me talks like that. I'm not necessarily saying that you know. Ignorance is associated with a particular, you know, accent, but I'm just poking fun. It's just, it, around me, my daily life, I have people say that to me, right? And it's like, well, to each their own. You know, I'm sure a lot of people have a whole bunch of different types of expensive things that they do or don't need, and it makes them feel better and more justified to come down on somebody else's spending habits or hobbies, right? Balance of the universe, whatever, don't care. Anyways, um... I've found that uh, despite knowing, you know, like, and knowing full well that in the future, if I want to drop 600 bucks on a knife because I think it looks cool, I'm going to do it. And the only person that affects me is me, right? Um, I take in the informa information that I, that I get, you know, that I seek out, and then I make my own uh, informed decision on whether or not to buy it. But somebody saying you, should, you shouldn't spend money on this for this reason, right? It just, it goes in one ear and out the other. We're all like that. So I completely understand that. Um, but I found that around the house, I, here lately I've just been kind of like reaching for something that has a blade that I know that will function properly and that is easy to carry. Um, and it has, like, I just, I realized that, I, I realized I was carrying this around. Uh, what you're seeing on the table, a lot of is mine, right? I mean like, yeah, it's super cool to carry this around, but it's huge, you know, and it's unnecessary. Um, this little guy, this little tough light is like a $20 knife and it's plastic and all say it's not premium steel, but it's got a blade on it. Um, and, uh, it, it, it works fine in the pocket. I mean, it just in the kitchen, you know, doing the art projects with the kids, cutting open boxes, right? Cutting open little plastic containers of beans, whatever. Sometimes I'll throw this guy in my pocket. You know, if I go outside the Maracnev. Uh, if I need to do something like a while ago, the dogs dug some holes. And so I took the robust outside and I was cutting open, um, bags of, uh, dirt, uh, some soil and stuff to just, you know, fill the holes. And I was just stabbing this guy in the ground and just going, um, I really didn't care, you know, whether ergonomics were optimized for the situation, whether the steel or grind was optimized for the situation. All I cared about is that it had a blade, right? This guy, easy. Just pull it out and it cuts, it's, it's kind of sharp, whatever. And uh, this uh, this thought occurred to me that's not gonna be, it's not like I had any sort of revelation. I was just like, oh my gosh, around the house, I just need a thing that cuts. <laughs> like I don't, um, there, there are so many aspects that I, um, you know, that I zero in on like infinitely during my reviews, little tiny things. Well, you can see back here, the back tang is shouldered. So as that wraps around the stop pin, it creates additional surface contact, which is good for wear over time when you're considering the lock face, right? Is it carbonized titanium? Is it a steel lock bar insert, right? That shouldering coupled with, right? That's the kind of stuff that I talk about. But I don't, when, you know, if I'm cutting open a thing of beans, I. <laughs> It kind of just goes out the window. And it's funny because every single time that I make a new knife purchase, I look at the construction. For example, let me get out one of my, my most recent purchases, actually. One that I love. Um, this is the Protec PDW Auto Invictus. I think these are just about gone. I'm, um, you might be able to pick one up here if you do it here really soon. And then hopefully they do another run and people can get them. But um, 
I look at it, I'm like, okay, so it's aluminum. And okay, so the nice thing about aluminum is it's got that type three hard code anodizing. Oh, I'm sure it's plenty durable. And then you've got the firing button. And is it recessed? I don't want to accidentally touch it. It's recessed. Oh, wait, but it's got a safety. Well, the safety can be, you know, good circumstantially, I suppose, if I accidentally left it out when my kids got a hold of it, or maybe, you know, to keep it 100% from going off in my pocket, right? You, you look at the knife and you decide that you want it subconsciously. And then you start making justifications for all the different features and why they might or might not be optimized for a circumstance, right? It's, it's all, a lot of it, sometimes your decision-making process is fluffed up by what you want and whether or not you've made the decision, you know, already. A lot of times I look at a knife and I go, I, yeah, I definitely want that. <laughs> and then I, then I start researching all the different little aspects of it. And then I convince myself, yeah, these are all good things. And truthfully, yes, a lot of them are, I mean, obviously, a good heat treat, a good blade geometry. I mean, shouldering to the to the back of the tang is good. A additional surface contact is good. T8 screws are better than T6 screws, in my opinion, right? Less hardware is better. Um, you know, ease of disassembly, all that stuff. But in the grand scheme of things, all of these teeny tiny little details are essentially just um, bolstering our, you know, our already decided minds, um, you know, in the purchasing process. But when it comes down to it, like here recently, I have this guy in my pocket, this $5 knife. And uh, I like it because it doesn't weigh very much and uh, it deploys easily and the blade is sharp, which is literally the majority of, that's everything that I could possibly need in my house, right? Like, okay, so here's the tiers of um, necessity in my house. Uh, this guy is always in my valet tray. So a lot of times I pick this guy up, right? Oh, maybe the blade's a little bit shorter. Maybe I'm going to be doing something with it where I, maybe that's just that, you know, it's just not quite big. Maybe a little bit bigger blade so I can hang on to or something that locks, right? I'm going to use this guy because it locks and we just make the cut. Well, you know, it kind of feels like I might, I feel like I might break that. All right. Well, I use the tough light. Tough light's got the triad lock, right? Um, well, you know, the, tri the, the, that's great, you know, but now I really need to cut into something and make a, a deeper cut, you know, and have a little more control over a longer blade, more, more, uh, the more knife. Um, so yeah, there's the, literally the entire spectrum of necessity around my house. You know, in my current situation, literally anything else that I might carry beyond these four knives is, it's just for me, right? I mean, it's just like me carrying other things because I wanted to. Does that mean that there's not a circumstance that I could run into, uh, you know, if I left my house that would require something like one of these. Um, no, I mean, yeah, there's definitely some added utility for some of these. Um, there is a benefit to a smooth action and bearings and stuff like that. But like, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, if I'm carrying uh, if I'm carrying around the hinder and I'm just open up boxes and beans and stuff with it, which I'm still convinced is probably 80 to 90% of what people, including myself, you know, who have hinders use them for anyway. Um, but, uh, if I'm carrying this around the house, it's just because I want to, right? Um, so it's funny, um, how, how many times that I have actually decided, you know, I want, I want a new beater, right? Cause I, I mean, as much as I love my really expensive stuff, I know you guys are always like, can you like make sure that you get every single knife out and flip them? What knife have we not seen? Uh, the, um, this is the, uh, uh, Holt Spectre V4 liner lock. Very cool. Yeah. Very, very excited about this one. Uh, and then we have the um, Olamic Cutlery Whipper Snapper with that beautiful uh, entropic finish on it. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I'm like, I need a, a beater, right? Look at this CJRB, uh, Centros, G10, steel liners, it's got D2 steel, it's got bearings for 35 bucks. That's an amazing deal. Amazing deal, right? And I convinced myself that you know, bang for my buck couldn't possibly be better. When the truth is, is that even that knife is overkill. <laughs> my day to day. I mean, probably the most justified, like the most like all purpose knife that I could possibly carry on me. The, the one that is just going to deal with just about everything that I could possibly put it up against in my household right now. Just being stuck at home and going outside and doing some stuff every now and then you know, trying to stay busy with some yard work here or there. Um, and considering the value, the, the, how, how replaceable the knife is, how durable the knife is, how easy it is to resharpen. 
this thing will basically do everything. I don't think I need anything more than this. So it's funny to me um, that if I were to sit down right now and decide to buy a knife from any tier, you know, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna find an amazing knife under $20. I would research every last tiny little detail about, you know, what is the most optimized, because that's what I like to do. It brings me enjoyment, right? There's kind of an odd euphoria, you know, associated with doing the things that you love. If the research portion of it is part of it, then you get that feeling, right? Even though all that stuff, all that extra stuff, really what's important on, I mean, a sub $20 knife is, does it have a blade? Can the blade cut, right? Doesn't even really have to be all that sharp. Cause I'll tell you what, this blade, is not really sharp anymore. It looks like it might be, but it's pretty it's pretty beat up and dull. And uh, yeah, you know what? It does just fine. <laughs> it just sort of cleaves through cardboard. Yeah, I know a sharp knife is safer than a dull or semi-dull knife, but you know, uh, yeah, you know, even like this guy, you know, I'm basically just pushing a sharpened wedge into stuff, but it's doing it and it's getting it done. And I might use this, you know, between eight and 20, eight and 20, what a weird, 10 to 20 times before I even like r remember like, oh yeah, I enjoy the, all the little aspects of this folding knife because I'm a knife person, right? It's like I forget because it's just this tool of convenience that's doing its job despite not being as optimized as all this other stuff out here. This is a weird, you know, and I, I'm not presenting this idea as if like, aha, aha, I've suddenly, you know, been enlightened and, and all of you should bask in this wisdom with me, having not all also come to this conclusion yourselves. Now, I mean, I think this is something that we all, you know, look at. We, we don't like to, especially a lot of us that are, have like, you know, graduated up into some of this more expensive stuff. Uh, oh yeah, the titanium uh, Mordax. Um, yes, this is wonderful. <laughs> yes, it is better than the aluminum one. I know I've, I've, owned, I've, I've owned the aluminum one. Um, this is uh, absolutely fantastic. It's, it's one of the most perfect folding knives or at least a knife that I enjoy, you know, but it's like uh, the button lock, is it, is it a necessity? Is it better or worse than any of the other locking me mechanism? I don't know. Whether or not it is, is trivial for me because I'm never gonna use it in a way where I need to find out, right? The titanium scales, boy, they sure do look good and feel good. Do I really need them? Well, I mean, it's optimized strength to weight ratio, right? I mean, and they can't corrode, uh, and, and they, they just, you know, they, they slip in and out of the pocket so easily, the friction between, all that stuff, while definitely is still, I would still define it as a benefit, it's much more minute a detail than I would care to admit, especially had I just spent hundreds of dollars on it, right? That's why we don't like to look back at stuff like this and go, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> because we spent, you know, it's like, like I, I hate admitting it. It's like this guy right here, $625 knife. I don't honestly think that there's anything I could do with this knife that I couldn't do with this knife. You know, if it really came down to it, I suppose, you know, uh, while, I, you know, I'll admit, because I know people, triad lock people, well, the triad lock is way stronger than the frame lock. Well, okay, in a specific force situation, but there's a lot of things that you could do with either of these knives where this knife and its structure might fail around the triad lock, right? which would still render the knife completely unusable. There is absolutely an amount of force that I could apply to the blade or the handle that would cause catastrophic failure in either while, while leaving the, the uh, triad lock intact, right? And great, the triad lock's still there, but the knife, that, like for example, if I wanted to stick either of these blades into something and start prying, I guarantee I can snap that blade before I snap the hinder. Guarantee it. Triad lock versus frame lock or not. The triad lock and will end up being um, just fine, but the blade will, will be snapped, right? So who cares? <laughs> but um, I still look at that and it's like, but am I going to be jamming the blade into stuff while I'm at home doing, you know, a, a lesson plan that was designed for a four-year-old <laughs> um, and doing art projects? Today we made an elephant out of a paper plate. Um, don't um uh, don't didn't didn't expect to do any heavy duty prime with a hinder xm18 or cold steel with a triad lock right and i think uh you guys can agree with me that's you know just not really a circumstance that would call for something like that even in the most extreme circumstance i would not be doing that so while it is a benefit that i think is you know it's fun to discuss on my channel and i think it is necessary to discuss for some people 
But it's like I've always said, I truly believe that 80% of us, and I put myself in this 80%, 80% of us are doing stuff daily with our knives that this guy or this guy or this guy or this guy could handle just fine. In fact, a lot of those, especially the more knife, is going to stand up with some of the best of them, right? 20% of people, I think, are truly outside pounding on their tools, right? I mean, I, I would put my dad in that category. He's 60, oh my gosh, 62, 63, and he's still out climbing all over the place and beating on, he's, he's ripping roofs off and remodeling, you know, insides of homes and adding on. He's, he does it every single day. He, I mean, he treats his tools well. He takes care of his tools, but they're tools, so they get thrown around, right? I've seen him use a pocket knife. I won't hand, I'll hand my dad this, but I will not hand my dad the XM18 if he needs to cut something with it, right? Because I don't want to use, I, I'm not ready to put those kind of marks on my on my baby. Maybe someday, but I'm just not ready right now. And that's up to me, not anybody else. I don't care what anybody says. It's up to me. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, you know, um, that is that that is the case there. Um, and I, I, think it's, um, I think it's one of those things where I'm really glad that I've recognized it because it keeps... Um, it keeps the bias like the, the problem with that is is thinking that there's overwhelming justifications for spent like like I'll admit like I mean some of the most amazing knives on this table um are these guys in my hands right here I mean what I'm holding here between these and should we do I dare here I'll tell you what let's, let's move this guy we'll, we'll go all monochromatic between these right here, this is a lot of money, and it's a lot of impressive steel and titanium. It's also a lot of engineering, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, a lot of attention to all of the fine details of function and performance and in and out of the pocket and blah, blah, blah. And what you end up with is a price that is, you know, more or less justified depending on who is looking at the knife and for what reason or who is, you know, considering purchasing the knife and for what reason, right? Um, and... Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, that's how we come to that value. Um, but the look, stepping back and going, yeah, that'll work just fine for around my house. You know, it's not optimized. It's not optimized, like any stuff. But um, what that does, that realization, is it keeps me from go, from a little more and more and more. You know, urging people to spend more and more and more money on a lot of you know details on a folding knife that are basically just to help you feel good about the purchase, right? Does a lot of extra hand tuning and hand work go into some of these more expensive knives, right? Does a lot of extra work go into this guy? Yes. Does it result in a flawless product that is going to perform, you know, exactly as you would expect a knife of this price to perform? Yes. Does it look beautiful? Is it nice to the touch? Does it not have any hot spots? Does it have a detent ramp? Does it have perfect detent, right? Does it have um, you know, perfect deployment every single time. You know, when you when you come up and look closely, is everything fitted so perfectly that even under a magnifying glass, you wouldn't be able to find any flaws? Yes. Does all that stuff matter when it comes down to just using the darn thing to cut open a bag of beans? No. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. That doesn't mean I don't have to justify it in, in light of utility to buy it. No, nah, I can buy it because I think it looks cool, right? And I'll read a hundred com, not that many. Truthfully, it's about on this channel. I'll, I'll let you guys know that the average daily amount of views on this channel is somewhere between twelve thousand and fifteen thousand views, and that's spread across all of my uploads, right? Uh, and I can see every single comment. Uh, not everybody leaves a comment. In fact, most people don't. So every single day, I would say I read at least two comments. Somebody goes. How could you ever spend that much money on a knife? All knives cut, all knives, you know, I read that and everybody else does and no minds are changed, right? I know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy stuff that I wanna buy and I'll justify it in whatever way I see fit. But it is important to recognize when a feature of a knife is more aesthetically pleasing or comforting, you know, in, in its construction, right? right? Enough extra effort was put into it to help me feel like, yes, that is absolutely as good as it could possibly be, even though it's probably 20% overkill and I'll never be in a situation where that specific feature of the knife will determine whether or not the knife fails, right? <laughs> it's just to make me feel good. And I'm perfectly okay with that. But I, 
it is important that I recognize that. And I know the difference between absolute utility and some extra dressy stuff. It's perfectly okay to purchase a knife and spend a whole bunch of money on the extra dressy stuff if it makes you feel good, and I'll never say otherwise. Um, this was an odd episode, but I find myself saying that uh, much more often lately, and I think that's the Knife Guy episodes should be kind of odd, and I, I kind of enjoy the uniqueness of it there. But this is a, a, essentially an appreciation uh, episode for all of the stuff that is severely underappreciated uh, on my channel, the stuff that is ironically being used more now than ever. Um, anyways, guys, I think that's going to be pretty much it for today's episode. If you guys enjoyed this or, you know, you know, at least were mildly entertained by it, as I usually say, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe, because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody. 